Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only Sandra Bernhard. Thank you. Where, where are the cheers and the applause? I mean, there's there's only so much you can muster yourself, but I'll take it. Trust me, Sandra, this audience is cheering as loud as they could right now. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. How is New York today? New York's gorgeous. I mean, it started off um, brisk. I was uptown. I took the train uptown. I had to run some errands. Came back down, and now it is sunny, bright, warming up. And it's been a very moderate, temperate winter, nothing too um, extreme. I think we've had our weather's been better than yours. It has been. I'm actually a New Yorker. I split my time between New York and LA. But Okay, so then you know. People here think I'm a Los Angelino and I'm like, oh no, no, no. I'm such a New Yorker. Great. I love it. But you are coming here. You're coming. You have some new shows coming up. May 11th, you're at the Tower Theater in Fresno. Then you're in the OC at the Garden Amphitheater on the 15th. So you're heading west. Yeah, I'm heading west and I can't wait because I haven't been in LA since October and that's too long for me. I, I but it's just been so busy on the on the East Coast. Then I was up in um Vancouver at the beginning of the year shooting um So Help Me Todd and my guest starring episode with the fabulous Marsha Gay Harden. Um and now I'm back in New York and shooting um a guest starring role on a very, very, very popular show, season two that I can't talk about yet. Um, so I'll be in two episodes of that, and I'm sure soon enough people will know about it. Oh, I can't wait to know what it is. Yeah. I was at your show in October and Oscars, and I have been a regular staple at your Joe's Pub between Christmas and New Year's. Like for everyone listening who has not had the pleasure of attending a Sandra show, tell them what they could expect on these upcoming dates. Well, <laughs> it's, you know, after all these years, it's still sort of indescribable to me in many ways what I do, because it's such a hybrid of all my influences over the years, you know, from just old school entertainment. You know, it's funny, I was watching um, Carol, um, Chan I think Carol Chan, Carol Channing, Carol Burnett, yeah, it was Carol King had um, posted this, this little, um, cut from the Carol Burnett show and she was singing You've Got a Friend and 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 um Mama Cass and um Bernadette Peters were they were doing a, a duet or a triad, however three many people are. Um and it was unbelievable. And and at first there were all these dancers in gold lame pants doing a very fossy s move around them. Then they parted the way and and the seas opened and there's these three incredible women, it had to be, I guess, 1970, 71. And I thought that's, those were the things that influenced me when I, when I was really little, you know, that little young. Um, I grew up on Carol Burnett. I grew up on Mary Tyler Moore. I grew up on, on, you know, Tina Turner and Motown. And then the whole sort of San Francisco sound. Um, so, so much is, sort of just been infused into my consciousness that when I do a show, I'm, I'm, I'm picking very carefully these moments that inspired me and melding them together in a sort of a reflection of what, it, what inspired me. And at the same time, very much in the moment of what's going on culturally, politically, you know, sociologically. So it's, it's like a blend of all of these things. And, I think, I mean, I would never cast disper dispersions, dispersions on anyone, but I think that the new generation of performers in many ways have a very small amount of reference to the past and don't really plug into the things that, you know, cause the, 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 the cultural um, earthquakes. And that's, that's what I'm good at. You know, I'm good at like taking the past, taking the present, and putting it into the future. I would agree with that from having seen your show many times. Like you reflect on the past. You are, you know, aware of everything going on in current pop culture and the politics and the world. And then we factor in some singing, some comedy. It's like, 
Is there, speaking to all of that, you know, you're at Sirius FM, like you've done so many parts of this business. Like, is there a part of this business you haven't done that you still want to try? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very much back into my acting right now because I, I have new managers and they're really great and really getting me up for great roles. And so I, I think that, I think that's really my focus right now is just to do as many interesting roles in TV and film as possible and finally get to explore parts of my personality and, you know, and life that I can reflect in, in, in different characters. So that's kind of where I'm at. You know, I mean, I've done so much and there's, but there's, there's like a whole big swath of things that I definitely want to explore and I'm, and I'm getting there. Well, speaking of your acting, you know, one of the first roles I remember you in was playing Nancy on Roseanne. I mean, what was that experience like? Well, you know, it was it was kind of like I didn't really know where it was going when I first went on the show because I had met Roseanne and and Tom Arnold at a party at Sue Menger's and the super agent who was my agent at the time in Beverly Hills. And I had never met Roseanne before. So it was the perfect setting to meet her. And a couple of weeks later they called and asked if I'd come on the show to to play Tom Arnold's fiance. I thought, okay, that'll be a hoot. Um, never dreaming that it would, you know, un unfurrow into this sort of long running experience. So we kept just, you know, evolving the characters. You know, she she ran from the arms of Tom Arnold into the arms of uh, Morgan Fairchild, which was so, you know, fresh and new and unexpected and super funny and crazy. And the rest is history. I mean, it was a fabulous experience. It was Roseanne at her at her very best, obviously, um, and all the guest starring or the starring co stars were amazing. Um, and I dipped in and out and kept doing my other things, but it was a nice, you know, base of operations for a few years. It was like you said, like it was so new and fresh. I mean, really, to me, Nancy is like you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, of course, but really. It to me as like a gay boy growing up in the suburbs, it really was, you know, like one of the first representations I remember seeing like of the LGBTQIA on TV. Like, do you think Rose, we got to get them all in there, Sandra. But do you <laughs> think like, you know, Roseanne is a visionary that doesn't get enough credit? Cause like that show really did put that character, you know, with Morgan Fairchild front and center for the times you were talking. Oh, I, I, I think Roseanne got more than enough accolades and, and, She's chosen many unusual paths out of the great love and respect people had for her. I don't know why she would do it, but she has. Um, and I mean, I, I think if she had stayed on that path when they, you know, they picked up the show again a few years ago and she could have had a whole second opportunity to, to you know, shine a light on what's happening politically. But I don't know. I can't. I mean, we, we were friends. I, I knew her as well as you can know anybody sort of in that position. Um, but I can't give you any more insight into where she's gone or what she's thinking. Right. Like you don't keep up with her. Do you think that was just such a shame? Because the show did come back. To, you, you were on it in 2017 to such fanfare. And I mean, the Connors is still alive and well, but that was, I mean, do you think she should still be on? Do you think? Well, yeah, she should still be on. It was her. It was her vision. It was her based on her life, but because of where she stands politically, she shouldn't be on, and the show shouldn't be on at all. Because, I mean, how can you take somebody's life, and and even though even though they, I mean, it's it's too it's treacherous territory to talk about, but unfortunately, she. I guess either didn't want it or she's just gone into a, a new phase of her life. A new phase of her life. Well, maybe we'll see <laughs> Nancy back on the Connors, which I, I is still going. So. I don't think so. I mean, they, have, they haven't had me on, so I don't think they're, I think they're, 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 they're also veering off into other directions.